smash the over on Vandy at two and a half wins for 2024. I repeat, smash the over. You are locked on Vandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Vandy podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. Thanks for making Locked On Vandy your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube as a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On today's episode, it's a full football episode. We find out just how Vandy can gain respect in the SEC. Bowl contention is still very much in play. That's a goal I've been talking about for a while, but at the very least, you should Definitely smash the over at two and a half wins. So I thought maybe with spring practice, some more transfer portal additions, things like that. At this point, the line would have moved a little bit, but it, it hasn't. It hasn't yet. And it still could move in the summer. But as of right now, it is still sitting at two and a half wins. Now, when it originally came out, I hope you smash the over. Um, it is still sitting at two and a half wins, you need to run and smash it again. So this is, this is an update over uh, this is an update on, on why. So when you, when you really break down what Vandy has done this off season, I, I think it's, I think it should give you great comfort to, to smash the over because you know, you, you look at the overhaul that's taken place. You look at the, the hires that have been made since then, the transfer portal additions that has made since then, the rebuild of the offensive line, the update to the to the uh, strength and conditioning. You get the updated schemes, updated receivers, brand new offensive line, some defensive backs being added to the mix, uh, just some overall things that have happened uh, over the course of the offseason that should give you a lot of comfort in taking at the very least this two and a half wins. Um, And and I think that's, you know, worst case scenario is, is three wins. So we start there and that could possibly win you some money. Okay. So if you take the two and a half, smash the over, smash the over, smash the over. Okay. Where are the wins coming from? Well, okay. So you have Alcorn state, Georgia state, which since then they've made a head coaching hire with uh, Del McGee. So that, Gets a, that game got a little bit trickier, but and then you have Ball State, so I think that's where your three guaranteed wins are. I, I think you're going to have, um, you know, I think your three wins lie uh, within there because Alcorn State that's an FCS game. That's a you know that's that's a fundraiser uh, for them. Then you're at Georgia State, which is a little bit tougher of a matchup, but with the way things are going, I, I think. With Diego Pavia coming in, we talked about him being a key to success. The identity that's going to center around can Diego Pavia be a factor in the run game? All that stuff. I I think you're you're going to sit there and say, okay, well Georgia State, you're gonna you're gonna go get that one because you have some veteran guys on the offensive line. You have some guys that are kind of buying into what you're doing scheme wise. You have a little bit of electricity on the outside um, at the wide receiver spot, and you have some toughness and some electricity even uh, in the slots too. And, and you have some big tight end targets. And I think there's going to be some matchup problems there that. I think Georgia State's not going to be able to overcome, and that's kind of where the difference is going to be made. At some point, Vandy's offensive line is going to be a strength over somebody. Georgia State, uh, Alcorn State, and Ball State are that somebody, uh, and, and and then Ball State as well. I, when you when you look at what Vandy's added to their roster, uh, I I don't know that they're going to, you know against their offense, I don't know that they're going to be able to guard those two guys on the outside. Um, I think Vandy's going to be able to do uh, some things in the run game as well. Defensively, I just don't think any of these teams are going to be able to um, be able to throw on Vandy. Vandy's made an extra effort to rebuild their secondary. So you're really just kind of looking at a team that you're not going to be able to advance the ball through the air very well uh, because they have some safeties and some things there uh, that they've added to go along with CJ Taylor. And they've had some really good pieces they've added at the cornerback position uh, over the course of the off season uh, during the transfer portal windows uh, with, uh, with the guys that they've added 
uh, at that spot. So it's uh, – I don't know that anybody has an answer for Corday Sindor. He he's a juice guy. He's somebody that's going to be off the edge, blitzing constantly. I just don't. I don't know that they're going to have a whole lot of answers for for what Vandy's going to do movement wise, defense, uh, defensively, uh, defensive schematics, stuff like that. I don't think their teams are going to have a whole lot of answers there. So there's your three wins for sure. Okay. Um, the toughest one, I think, being Georgia State because they're well coached with Del McGee. Um, but even then, it's year one of a new head coach who just arrived on the scene in I think it was February, March, kind of late a little bit because they had some they had a late coaching change. So you you gotta you know you gotta take that into consideration as well. Yeah, they're going to be successful, but it's going to take them at least a year to get kind of things implemented the way Del McGee wants especially with recruiting infrastructure and uh, getting guys in. But uh, Georgia State is in a very, very advantageous area of Georgia where they can get some talent. Even the, even the talent that doesn't go to Georgia and Georgia Tech, there's still a lot to be had for Georgia State to kind of kind of pick off. So uh, that's that's got to be, you know, if it's not to be locked on Georgia State by any stretch, but that's got to be good for them. But all that's going to take a year. And uh, they're going to have to kind of manage through 2024 with, you know, not as great of a roster as Del McGee wants. And that's going to be advantage Vandy. And so those are the three wins. But like, why after after a just complete disaster, uh, two and 10 season a year ago when you had three playmaker, three big time playmakers at wide receiver? Why? But why is it going to be? you know, smashing over at two and a half wins or uh, we're going to talk about later bowl game contention, you know, where the wins coming from, what, um, you know, how can they, uh, how can they command respect within the league? Well, um, why? Okay. Well, there's been a complete, you know, it starts with this. There's been a complete mentality change. Okay. That's something that people have got to understand about Vandy. There's, there's been a complete mentality change overhaul something has clicked in clark lee's brain i'm not sure what it is i'm not sure what sparked it i mean i guess two and ten and almost losing your job will will do that a little bit but there has been a mentality change where he said okay if i don't get control of this car if i don't get control of this thing it's gonna go we're gonna go off a cliff okay that that's that's gonna be that's going to be the story of Clark Lee's coaching career if he doesn't get control of this thing. It seems now that he has grabbed the wheel and said, okay, first things first, coordinators, you're out. I'm taking the defense. I'm hiring a new coordinator, okay? And then he he sat there and thought, okay, we are Vandy. We can't go get a standard guy because, A, there's a lot of standard guys that probably aren't going to jump on board for presumably what everybody thinks at the time – a one-year career suicide type situation where you're jumping on a burning ship, you're going to go down with a ship, and it's going to be it's going to be bad news, and you may never recover. Okay, um, so like there, there's a lot of options that were off the table just because of that, because Clarkley probably could have been rightfully fired uh, after what happened last year. Um, uh, with two years ago beating Florida and Kentucky and just nearly missing a bowl game, um, but. Uh, you you follow that with a two and ten stinker, not a lot of not a lot of shine on your program, so to speak. So um, the mentality change of just being okay. Well, this is how we got to roll. You know, I'm going to take the defense. I'm going to think outside the box. I'm going to hire an offensive coordinator, and I'm going to let him. I'm going to get a guy that I trust, a veteran guy, um, and I've got to think outside the box. I've got to get creative with this hire, and he did. He said, okay. Um, there's a team out west that was that came into the plains and absolutely not only beat Auburn but dominated Auburn, beat them handily, right? And Zach Blackerby, if you're listening to this one, you know who I'm you know who I'm talking about. Okay, this 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 team is going to give Hugh Freeze nightmares. Probably still does. And the fact that they are now that entire, basically that entire team is now in Nashville and still on Auburn's schedule, that's got, got to have some sleepless nights for Hugh Freeze. And that week's going to be a nightmare for him. So, but he goes up to New Mexico State, hires Tim Beck. All right. Tim Beck's identity 
And what they do at New Mexico State, well, they bring Diego Pavia with them. They bring they bring the number one and the number two quarterback with them. They bring a couple guys from the staff, including the head coach who had to resign due to health concerns, who is kind of like the head coach off the field. So he's kind of like he's kind of like the head coach when Clark Lee has to do defensive stuff. Uh, and then Clark Lee's the head coach, obviously, when when it's time to be head coach. But uh, Jerry Kill is kind of like that the other guy in the room saying, okay. Clark, do this. Clark, do that. Hey, Clark, we need this. Hey, Clark, you should do this. Hey, Clark, you should handle this this way. Um, he hired Jerry Kill, which is the ultimate secure move, right? It's it's the ultimate, hey, I need help in, in doing things uh, better, more efficient, more effective. I'm going to hire Jerry Kill. He's been a successful head coach. If not for health concerns, he probably wouldn't be in this situation. He would probably be on a power five sideline somewhere winning some games. He was on the verge of that in Minnesota. Seizures got him. He had to step back. Then he got back in it. Had to step back. You know, every time he tried to, every time he tried to get back into the fire, he he got he got knocked back down. So um, he's a hell of a coach. The point of that is he hell of a coach. So the mentality changed of, okay, we're going to be hyper aggressive. We're going to be out of the box. We're going to form an identity on both sides of the ball. We're going to get playmakers and we're going to get guys that fit what we want to do. We're not going to just try to get the best players available. We're going to get the best fits. All right. And that's going to look a little different. Okay. Fans are going to be scratching their head a little bit because you're going to look at stats and you're going to wonder, whoa, 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 who, who is this guy? Like, why are we taking advantage? Well, you know, it's it's all just a big puzzle, and there's all skill sets that work into that puzzle. And these guys kind of know what they want. They've targeted what they want. I mean, Jacob Bostic had no stats at Iowa. We talked about him on the show. He signed at AM. So, like, these guys, talent, people recognize talent. So, to be honest, I think the mentality change is going to get you to three wins, which if you're a betting person – the over under set at two and a half. The bar set really low. You have a chance to make some money on that. So smash the over there. But I think I'm thinking bigger. The mentality change with strength and conditioning, with the hires that they've made, some of the people they've brought in. I'm thinking bigger. I'm thinking bowl game. Bowl game is in play. We'll talk about that next. All right, this episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Guys, are you watching ESPN or Fox Sports? Are you having to turn the volume down on your TV because all that shouting? Are you tired of it? Well, you need to make the switch now to Locked On Sports Today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, smash the over. If you're just not joining in, if you're joining somewhere halfway in, smash the over, okay? Go to FanDuel, go to DraftKings, go to wherever. Smash the over. Go to FanDuel, actually. Do that. Um, Smash the over. It's that simple. The over two and a half wins in 2024, I think it's an easy bet. With everything that's happened in this offseason, I think it's an easy bet. You should smash the over. Okay. Now, here's why I think bowl game is in play. Now, there's no, I don't think there's a prop bet for Vandy making a bowl, but if there is, I'm going to take it. And I think you, in 
you know, you should really kind of think about taking it. And and here's why it's in play because well, we got to figure out where these other three wins are going to come from because you have to win six to get into a bowl game. And uh, we're going to find out where the other three wins are going to come from. But <clears throat> we'll talk about where the wins are coming from. But we got to like, can you know, why is it? We know why, you know, mentality change is good for, I think, three wins against the schedule. But, like, why else is a bowl game in play? You're probably asking yourself that. You're probably saying, okay, what what's what's this lunatic talking about? This Vanderbilt football, they went 2-10 and 10 last year. Well, the mentality change also. But, you know, when I say the additions in the portal, okay, what Vanderbilt is doing, there's two ways to, there's two ways to go about this, okay? There's two ways. One, you can have the talent acquisition, okay, where you're just like, okay, we need some receivers. We need some offensive linemen. Who are the highest rated guys? Let's go get them, right? That's one approach. And you just collect talent. You don't like a lot of people kind of overlap with their skill sets. And you're just like, hey, you're you're the most talented guys. We'll, We'll get you in here and then we'll figure it out from there. The other approach, and there's no right or wrong, like, some of the big programs can do that. They just assemble the talent and say, okay, we're going to figure it out. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not a wrong approach. Okay. The other approach is opposite of that. It's, hey, we have this plan. We have this identity. We need, we need this skill set, this, this skill set, and this skill set, so on and so forth. Right. We need guys that can do this. We need a guy that can do that. And that's exactly what Vanderbilt is doing. They've subscribed to that model. It's more of like the puzzle model where like you have maybe like a couple of super talented guys that can do a lot of different things. And then you have very specific puzzle pieces uh, all in there. So you have like Jeremiah Dillon, Darian, Darian Wiley uh, that can come in and their skill set more is like stretch the field Um make contested catches, be red zone guys. Like that's kind of their, I don't want to say niche because like they're kind of like slightly better than that, but like, that's kind of what they, it's kind of what they do. Jeremiah Dillon couldn't quite crack the lineup at Ole Miss. Not that he's bad. He signed with Ole Miss out of high school, so he can't be that bad. I just had, you know, just ran into a loaded roster and just needs an opportunity. Uh, Darian Wiley signed with ULM out of high school performed well thinks he wants to take a shot in the in the best league in the country has an opportunity to do so at Vanderbilt he's very good at the intermediate catches he's very very tough you know somebody that's going to um he's kind of like the him and Quincy Skinner like the dogs of the of the group like they're really like just gritty you know and so you get guys like that and then you get guys like Foundy who's probably more of like a bigger target guy that's going to like you need somebody on third and eight to run a 12 yard curl to get a first down like he's your guy right you you have Quincy Skinner and, and Junior Cheryl on on uh, the roster already those guys can do a lot of different things probably run some stuff out of the slot Quincy Skinner can kind of play both a little bit um, empty sets you you can kind of get creative with personnel uh, there uh, then you have uh Micah Bell, who just transferred, and he's kind of like your jack of all trades. So you take all these pieces, and then defensively is the same way. You take all these pieces, okay, and you put them into a puzzle. And when you when you have exactly the skill sets that you need to feature the parts of your system that you need, whether it's offense or defense, you're going to run into some success. Now, there's going to be things, you know, this is a good league, okay? And, you know, these guys – aren't the highest of rated talent. These guys haven't necessarily produced on a high level or consistently, but, but those guys have chips on the shoulder. They have something to prove and that will go a long way. So to me, your bowl game goal is very much in play because Vanderbilt has found these puzzle pieces that just kind of work with what they want to do. Now they just got to go and practice and execute and find just how the puzzle fits together. Now you have all these pieces, you have a puzzle that, that does 
that, but that 2024 puzzle is going to reveal itself over the course of the season. You're going to start to find out, okay, what situations do we, you know, do these puzzle pieces fit into? Like, when are we going to use the fade at the back pylon? You know, what situations are those going to, are those going to, going to hit? Uh, how do we, you know, where, what are the points where we use uh, Cole Spence? Where, what are the points that we use Quincy Skinner on, on shallow routes? When do we start utilizing Micah Bell as a running back? Do we, you know, do we implement a lot of empty formations because we have Micah Bell? You know, th- those type of things that come up as, as you're game planning because you have these different pieces that all can contribute. It makes for – it makes the, the goal of a bowl game that much better. I think it elevates Vanderbilt – off of the off of the f- floor, out of the cellar, and in bowl contention, and I think that's very much in play. So, who do they get the wins against? Though, there's three likely opponents that I think are trending downward for Vanderbilt, and that's where I think they get the wins. And we'll, uh, stay tuned. I'm gonna talk about that next. All right. Did you know that Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace to the NBA? You excited about that? Well, now you do know. That makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier because, like I said, Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace to the NBA. Prices of the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. So, I don't know if you want to go to a Nuggets game or a, or a, a Timberwolves game, but those should be pretty fun to go through. So take out your phone and, and and just follow along with me. Okay, we're going to scroll. All right. So what one of my favorite features is this. Okay, you, you get to customize your spot. All right. Um, you get last minute tickets, flash deals, all that all that good stuff. Okay, views from the seat. My my favorite thing is the last minute deals. Okay, because when you log on. You're like, oh crap! I want to find some NBA tickets. Like, I I, I want to go to this game. This is going to be an important game. And you see, okay, oh wow! You can save up to sixty percent off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy theater, whatever it is you want to go to last minute. There's all kind of deals all the time. You have flash deals, which save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of game or event. So there might be a featured section. Uh, zone deals: you choose the section, you let Game Time choose the seats. Game Time really likes when you do that, so they're going to give you, they're going to hook you up with some. Uh, with some discount there. Uh, if you toggle the all all in pricing, you know exactly what you're getting up front. So there's no confusion, no surprises, no nothing at checkout. Uh, you get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. So you can click on it and see what your view is going to look like. So you get no surprises there either. Game time has the lowest ticket price guarantee as well. If you find one cheaper, game time will credit you a hundred and a hundred and 10% of the difference. So your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, welcome back. We are wrapping up the show here. Segment number three. Thank you for making Locked On Vandy your first listen each and every day. I appreciate you. Um, also, make sure you check out Locked On SEC. And while you're at it, uh, check out Locked On Auburn with Zach Blackerby. See how he's uh, see how he's living over there. Um, ask him when you get over there, ask him if, uh, if Hugh Freeze is having nightmares about the Vandy State Aggie doors. Okay. Just see if he, see if he, uh, see if they're doing okay over there. So, um, talking about Vandy and what a surprising season they're going to have. And this is pretty, well, coming off a two and 10 season, this is kind of one of those things where you're probably confused as to, okay, two and a half wins. Okay, I can buy that. Bowl game, this guy's crazy, right? You're probably thinking that, but I'm not, though. Like, I'm not crazy. Like, the wins, like, where do the wins come from? Okay, well, we talked about the first three wins. We know about those. 
Okay, so let's look at the conference games. Okay, and Virginia Tech. All right, let's take a look. All right, season opener. We'll start there. All right, what do we know? Well, they, Virginia Tech does have to come to town. All right, Virginia Tech is returning a lot of people. But one of those people that are not returning is Michael Vick. Um, Frank Beamer's not on the sideline. There is no Beamer ball there. Um, yes, Virginia Tech is ranked uh, ahead of the 2024 season. They've got a lot of guys coming back. But they have a tendency to underperform. And so we really don't know what Virginia Tech's going to bring to the table. And for that mystery, I think Vandy has a chance in this one. So I, I, I'm going to strike this as a maybe. We're going to come back to it. But this would be a great tone setter for Vanderbilt in this opener. Okay? And they have a chance to start 3-0 and before traveling to Missouri. Now, Missouri-Alabama are the next two conference games after Georgia State. I, look, I love the new mentality. I love the overhaul. But you're just not winning at Missouri unless there's massive injuries on their sidelines. Like you're just, I, I just – Missouri right now, they're going this way. Luther Burden is a problem for a lot of people. Eli Drinkwitz has kind of finally figured uh, some things out. Brady Cook is a really good quarterback. Um, their defense is very scrappy, and they're a tough team to play against at home. So I don't think the win I don't think there's a win coming against Missouri. Unless there's a lot barring injury. Okay. Same with Alabama. You're home against Alabama. Maybe out Al, maybe you lull Alabama to sleep. Maybe there's some injuries. Maybe they get enamored with the with the construction at the stadium. Maybe, you know, maybe the team has too much fun on Broadway the night before. I just don't see it. Okay. I don't see it. There, Alabama's still Alabama. Kalen DeBoer, despite what people think, he's still a great coach. Um, he's not Nick Saban, but who is? And Jalen Milro is still a problem. He's still a problem, and he will continue to be a problem. And I think he'll be a problem for Vanderbilt. And I think Alabama wins that game. So now you're sitting at three. Now you're sitting at possibly three and two. Okay. So I, I, I'm gonna strike. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give us a win against Virginia Tech. So you're sitting at three and two right now, um, at Kentucky. I think this could be a win. I know Kentucky is a tough place to play. I know it's a tough place to win at. But when you're Vanderbilt and you're two and ten, people tend to overlook you a little bit. And they've got some things to figure out at quarterback. They've got a new guy in Brock Vandegrift, which. I, you know, he's a talented guy, five star guy out of out of Athens, uh, transfer from UGA, won the backup job last year behind Carson Beck. Admirable, but we just haven't seen him in these type of games, and I don't know by October twelfth what kind of turmoil Kentucky's going by, uh, going through what what their season looks like to that point, and there's a chance that things could fold a little bit. You know, you, you had Mark Stoops just kind of betray your trust a little bit by flirting with Texas A&M before saying no, and I think really they told him no. Um, their defense is always tough. It's going to, you know, it'll be a close game, be a tight game. It'll be kind of like that game two years ago where uh, they beat Will Levis and um, they kind of just made big stops at big opportune times and took advantage in special teams as well. If they can find an answer for Barry and Brown, I think it's a win. That's what I'm calling it. Call my shot. Big road win at Kentucky. All right, Ball Ball State is next. That's you know that's a wrap. Uh, Texas. Okay. Um, no, I'm not even going to waste time on that. Uh, at Auburn and South Carolina, I think those are your. I think those are your other two wins. LSU, Tennessee. No, those aren't wins. But I think Auburn. is trending downward under Hugh Freeze. I just don't. I just don't buy it. Even though it's a home game for Auburn. I don't buy it. And South Carolina, I, I think, is heading downhill fast, and they don't have Spencer Rattler anymore. So I think that's where uh, that's where they go. So uh, to give you a little preview of what I'm going to talk about on, on, on the next show is 
I think Vanderbilt can gain a lot of respect from their SEC brethren if they can win a tough road game at Kentucky, if they can win road games at Kentucky and Auburn, uh, if they're competitive in their games against Texas, Alabama, Missouri, uh, LSU, and Tennessee. I think if they give them uh, a run for their money and don't get blown out, uh, and I think they can – I think they can earn some respect there. They might can squeeze an upset out at, at some point in one of those games. I don't know. Um, but you give yourself a chance to win. You just might win a few of those things. You might just learn a few things. So I think by playing hard, by playing competitive, and getting to five wins will we'll earn Vanderbilt a lot of respect. But we'll talk more about that on the next episode because, guys, I'm quickly out of time. I'm in overtime, actually. So uh, for that being said, I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to leave you in your thoughts there uh, for tomorrow and and try to figure out what I'm going to say for that. So um, this is the Locked On Vandy podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being every day or follow us on social media. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you like what you hear, tell a friend. Tell a friend. Shout out to those everydayers. Uh, We love you. Uh, You make this show you make this show happen and shout out to uh, off season Vanderbilt Commodores uh, on X. That is, uh, that is my man uh, at Vandy tracker. So follow him as well um, on, uh, on social media and uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow better than ever. And uh, you know, the drill anchor down, behave yourself. Peace.